Well, the simplest suggestions are just to listen to the media, come to meetings like this. So that would be an example of one of the supports of Balanced View, which would be the media. And if you go to the Balanced View website, you'll see that there are thousands of hours of talks, videos, free books that you can download to your MP3 player, and then you can just listen to them. I mean, that doesn't require any effort whatsoever. That was my main practice when I first came to this training. I also came to meetings like this. And basically all we're doing here is talking about something, we call it open intelligence, you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. You can call it God, but I suggest you don't, but because if we were talking about short moments of God, I'd be talking to myself in this room, and there wouldn't be anyone else here, or maybe a few people. See, God, God is a very loaded term. Every, everyone in this room probably has their own idea of what God is, and probably, well, you, not probably, definitely, you just look at the, what's going on in the world. People stick their flag in the ground, this is what God is. And there's another person over there with a different flag, and they just want to cut each other's heads off, and it's not very pleasant. That absolutely isn't God, by the way. Um, but um, the point is, is in this training, it's um, the terminology that's used is, is, is very uh, purposefully neutral and it, it's, it is not loaded. And what's more important is that the actual practice of this training, which is short moments of open intelligence repeated many times become continuous. The actual practice of this training um, is based on experience. It's not based even on having to think about what does open intelligence mean? Or opening intelligence, sometimes Candice calls it. And, and so right now we can all experience what we in Balanced View call open intelligence. You can call it whatever you like. We used, we used to call it clarity and we used to call it awareness in this training. And as the training uh, develops with feedback from participants and practitioners, the, the, the language, it changes to become more powerful, more direct, more easy to, to understand. Uh, in five years, it probably won't be open intelligence, it's probably be something else, and I'm desperately trying to figure out what that would be, so <laughs> I can be the one that invents it, but it, 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 it's never gonna happen. So, so let's, uh, let's introduce ourselves to open intelligence right now as an experience. So the way we do that is if you, if you just stop, stop thinking, stop describing, and do it again, you know, because obviously thought, a thought will come back. Maybe I can't stop thinking, I can't stop describing, but most people can. If I can do it, I think anyone can do it. But you just stop thinking. What do you notice in your experience? <coughs> so stop thinking again. It's not a very interesting open meeting, is it? We can, <laughs> we can, we can edit this bit out. I'm talking to the camera now. Um, so, but the point is, is that when you, when, you, when you stop the train of thought and describing, you, you, there is something that you notice in your experience. It's... it's uh, it's open, it's very relaxed. It's really hard to describe, <laughs> but it's easy to experience. So this is what we call open intelligence. And what you'll find th through that simple practice, that, so the, the only practice in the training is, is that instruction, short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times become <coughs> continuous. So that repeated many times is, is essential. Because if you're like me, you've probably been involved in practices where you needed to hold something in place. So you need to find where open intelligence is and then it's, you just have to have open intelligence and nothing else, which you can't do. Because the whole nature of our, our experience as human beings is that we have <coughs> the basis of our capacity to experience, which is open intelligence. Call it whatever you like, Susan. Call it Susan. <laughs> Shall I stop talking? 
But the, the whole point, the, the point is, is that you, you identify in your experience, we've already identified that you, you, you have open intelligence. You have open intelligence. You don't, you're not getting it by coming to the Balanced View training. You have it already. And the practice is simply to acknowledge that, that quality about yourself whenever you remember. And the most amazing thing about this training for me was that I could see that that instruction didn't require that I changed anything about my life in order to, in order to practice. And that was so radically different from anything else I practiced in my life. You do not need to change anything about your thoughts, emotions, sensations, circumstances in order to be able to practice that single instruction. And, and what's more, which is equally amazing, is it's your thoughts, your emotions, your circumstances provide you with all of the material you need to be able to practice that one instruction. So I'm Adrian, I'm fat, I'm miserable and I'm depressed. How do you do? <laughs> okay, so for my entire, <clears throat> for my entire life, I, re I really believe that I needed to get rid of all of those things so that I could be happy, get a girlfriend. So this is the conventional approach to happiness. Um, and I wasn't very successful at modifying any of those things that, that basically were with me for my entire adult life. So, so that was... You know, that was, that was very, very difficult. But um, when I came to this training, I could see, wow, I don't have to do anything with these things because if the, the experience of, oh, I'm so depressed comes up, in that, in that experience, I have the, have the choice to either go off in the stories that I described for my entire life about why I'm depressed. I'm fat, I'm English, I'm, I'm, I need a girlfriend. My parents didn't do well enough for me when I was growing up and this is the cause of everything and you know these are the things that would run around in my head all day long. And then I had other strategies to, to combat depression which was one of them was uh, well, drugs and alcohol. That was a main part of my life for, for nearly two decades. And it was all in an effort to stop what I considered to f the, the negative things in my life and to have more of the positive. Now, it must be said that the drugs and alcohol, the, the downside was as bad, probably worse, than the actual afflictive states in the end. So, so um, you know, that obviously wasn't an option. So when I was introduced to this simple practice, and in the very first me open meeting, say, it's being told, nothing about you needs to change, I was fuming at the back, really angry. What's she talking about? Everything about me needs to change. Look at me, for God's sake. And so, so it, you know, being in the open meeting brought up a lot of, of resistance, but very gently and very powerfully, it must be said, rather than getting into an argument about terminology, about whether I think this practice is going to work or not, it was just very lovingly put back to me and said, well, just show up. You know, just show up and see what happens. And so this would be the, the heartfelt invitation to, to all of you, especially if you're new, would be just to go to the website um, at, the, at the end of the open meeting. There are people there that can uh, help you with giving you some MP3s from the website onto your uh, phone. Um, and then just listen to these, like, you know, listen to a talk as you're walking to work and coming home from work every day for a week. And then maybe come to the open meeting next weekend and just see what happens. And I guarantee you, you will be completely amazed like Candice said, it sounds like a nothing instruction. It sounds like, well, I mean, what the hell are we doing here? What are they talking about? Leave everything as it is. It's just like, I mean, what does that even mean? I put my clothes on this morning. Does that mean that I'm not leaving everything as it is? <laughs> you know, so it's very easy to get to get into um, thinking about what's going on in this training. And, 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 and if, you, if you start thinking, you, you come up with paradox after paradox. So, you know, everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. And then you switch on CNN or look at the internet and you see all these horrible things that humans are doing to each other. Everything is not perfect. So, so there's, there's immediate conflict 
from, 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 of course, from understanding to the actual experience of what we're talking about. So it's very, it, it's vital, in fact, that you take this practice and you test it. Then what happens is you see in your own experience, with your own own thoughts, emotions, and sensations. Usually, that that happens first. So, for the with the example for me with depression. To recognise depression as completely perfect and no different from uh, from basically infinite love as an experience is just it brings tears to my eyes. That th that doesn't make sense. So, depression is perfect. Anger is perfect. Physical pain is perfect. It's it, it is the blazing love and fire of the creative power of the universe. Wow, where did that come from? <laughs> That was, that was quite a good one. <laughs> and uh, and so, so you see, this, 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 experience, this experience of the perfection of what I tried to eradicate from my life, for my entire life, then I, then I really got that statement that everything is perfect. Now, it doesn't mean that we, we as human society collectively don't need to pull our fingers out and sort, sort the world out because absolutely we do. You know, it's a disaster. But if we're trying to change the world based on blaming, judging, criticizing, based on hatred and violence, then we're really we're no different to the people who are cutting the heads off other people in order to relieve their suffering. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so important to realize how profound this practice is because what we're doing is we're shifting our uh, behavior as individuals from blaming, judging, criticizing, trying to basically uh, assassinate our, our negative data. If we're trying to destroy depression to feel okay, then that mechanism is exactly the same as killing another person because you don't believe in what they believe in. It's the same mechanism. It's trying to relieve suffering by getting rid of what you think is a, is a threat. So in this practice, first of all, it has to be your experience with your own data. And, and, and just everyday, simple everyday relating. It doesn't have to be like really massive, you know, overwhelming depression. Just, just here in Stokes Croft, just you know, when you see somebody that you, you, you might appear to be a little bit threatening, how is it to practice short moments as you walk past them, rather than trying to do that ridiculously contrived thing of walking close enough to them so that they won't talk to you, but not far enough away so that you look scared, or that you need to give them money, or, you know, like, that's how I used to live. I used to see somebody that might ask me for money, and I, but I didn't want to cross the road because that would be really insulting and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm open and I'm a liberal person so I'm going to walk at a distance where I don't have to interact but that it shows them that I still care sort of thing. It's just like, <laughs> what, what? It's just, uh, you know, like, we all play, the, play these ridiculous games with ourselves in our minds all day long, all day long. If, you know, and then, and then we, if somebody looks at us in the wrong way, then that means that they, they've got a, you know, he must have another girlfriend or something like that. Just like, I mean, I, I can share this from my own experience because the, the stories I used to concoct in my head about, the, you know, the most ri ridiculously innocuous happenings throughout my life, it, it just beggars belief. And to be so caught up in this fabrication, you know, it's uh, it's very very, yeah. It's 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 not a pleasant way to to be, and we all generally look for relief from that in many many different ways. So now we we have a uh, practice, the four mainstays, which is the support of balanced view, that you're very very welcome to test. And I you know I don't want to sound like an evangelist, but <laughs> fucking test them <laughs> uh, because. That, that isn't an evangelist, is it? They don't say things like that. <laughs> because uh, because we, we're, we're, we're we are taking a stand uh, for a, a completely new human society. It's not just about 
you know, nice middle class people meeting on Sunday talking about how wonderful the world is. It's about ch <laughs> changing, changing, changing the world and bringing this training to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible, so that they can empower themselves within their own community. It's so important. It's, it's just so, so important. It's world changing. And I know that sounds very, very, uh, I don't know what the word is, over the top. So it's down to you to make this your experience, to see if what I'm saying is bullshit or not. And the only way you're going to do that is to test that support for yourself. And if, but if you do do that, you, you will reveal the greatest, most amazing secret ever, which is you are the greatest person on the planet and your life is totally the best life ever without anything changing.